Africa, they don't give a, a rat's ass about jailing innocent people. They do it all the time. They've done it for centuries. And here we have a story of a man, and this is probably way more common than uncommon in America for you, you know, for them to jail you over petty shit and also jail you for things you never did in the first place, just like in the case of Derek Hamilton. And ladies and gentlemen, they got these laws rigged up in some states, they can imprison you, find out you're innocent and you can't do nothing or get any restitution for it. So he's lucky that he's receiving $7 million in this whole thing because there are many that are exonerated and do not get anything, barely anything. And, and that tells me if you got your laws rigged up that way, where you won't even pay an innocent person for wrongfully imprison them, that tells me you, you do this stuff intentionally. What do you have to lose if you do it? Nothing, especially if you don't have to pay nothing. And look at it this way, 23 years of free prison labor. So for them, it's win-win, even if they put you in there wrongfully. This is the New York Times, falsely imprisoned for 23 years. Now he's receiving $7 million. This is absolutely ridiculous. Twenty years ago, Derek Hamilton was at his lowest point, locked in solitary confinement for a murder he insisted he did not commit. Over the next two decades, he slowly crawled his way out of the belly of the beast. He became a prison house lawyer, helping his fellow inmates appeal their convictions. Twenty-three years later, he finally persuaded prosecutors to throw out his own conviction after an eyewitness recanted her testimony. She should go to jail. To me, if you put somebody in jail falsely, your ass should go to jail. Wow. Once free, he became an activist, toiling to get others he believed were wrongfully convicted out of jail. Late last week, Mr. Hamilton, 54, took on a new role in the long drama of his fight against injustice, a successful plaintiff. City officials in New York and New Haven, Connecticut, agreed on Friday to pay him a total of $7 million to settle a lawsuit he had filed against three police officers, accusing them of fabricating evidence against him. Again, that's something very common in this country. You know, cops planting evidence, lying on police report, we know is, that's rampant in this country. And to me, if a cop is always right, then he shouldn't have to lie on a police report about anything. But it, it is... To me, them lying on police reports is at epidemic levels. One of those officers, Louis Scarcella, a retired New York detective, has emerged in recent years as a symbol of wrongful convictions, as numerous cases he handled have fallen apart. Under the terms of the agreement reached on the eve of what would have been a trial in federal court in Brooklyn, Mr. Scarcella admitted no wrongdoing. He has scheduled Mr. Hamilton himself to testify at the trial. So Hamilton is going to get to testify against the dirty cop that put him in jail for no reason. Good. That needs to happen more often. For Mr. Hamilton, the payout, while substantial, was not the point. It'll help my family out financially, he said. It doesn't settle what I went through. Damn right. Mr. Hamilton added, everyone's life went on for 20 years. Mine stopped. In 1991, when he was 28 and living in New Haven, Mr. Hamilton was arrested 
by Mr. Scarcella and the local police accused of having murdered a Brooklyn man, Nathaniel Cash, whom he had known when he lived in the borough. The only eyewitness against him at his trial in the state Supreme Court was Mr. Cash's girlfriend, Joel Smith, who had given conflicting accounts to the police about Mr. Hamilton's role in the killing. Still, the jury convicted him and Mr. Hamilton was sent away in 1992 to what soon became a series of upstate prisons. He spent much of the next 23 years performing jailhouse legal work. He poured over uh, trial transcripts, filing motions on behalf of other inmates and occasionally winning their appeals. At one point in Attica Correctional Facility, he filed papers challenging his own long stint in solitary confinement, claiming it was cruel and unusual punishment, which it is. In 2007, Ms. Smith went to the authorities and asserted that Mr. Hamilton was innocent. Mr. Scarcella, uh, she said, had coerced her into testifying against him. So he threatened the girlfriend. So he threatened her and she got scared and accused an innocent man. This Scarcella is the one that belongs in jail. It seems like nobody else belongs in jail more than he belongs there. Eight years later, the conviction review unit of Brooklyn District Attorney's Office asked a judge to toss out Mr. Hamilton's guilty verdict. Prosecutors noted that Ms. Smith had been unreliable, untruthful, and incredible in her testimony. These people got a lot of nerve. There is no credibility among these damn prosecutors in this country, too. By the point, the district attorney's office was two years into an expansive investigation of dozens of Mr. Scarcella's former murder cases, looking into allegations that he had coerced other witnesses and had threatened people to get them to confess that investigation, which is ongoing, has led to the release of 14 inmates. All that behind one dirty cop, Mr. Scarcella, don't even deserve to be called Mr., and has resulted in the city and state paying tens of millions of dollars to settle lawsuits against Mr. Scarcella. Wow. This is a picture of Scarcella right here, the little lousy cheating cop that put all kinds of folks in jail that didn't commit crimes and stuck them with murder charges. He should get the sentence these clients got for murder. That's the kind of sentence he gets. He's one of many dirty cops in America. The district attorney's office has, however, maintained that Mr. Scarcella was not committed, um, has not committed any punishable conduct. Okay, so lying and falsifying information and threatening clients, uh, witnesses, uh, that's not punishable. And maybe, maybe not in America. I, I, I could believe that. Or broken the law. Since becoming a free man, Mr. Hamilton has labored to overturn many convictions linked to Mr. Scarcella. Mr. Hamilton has worked with lawyers as a paralegal to investigate facts and has helped draft lawsuits and motions in support of new trials. A few years ago, he founded a group called Friends and Family of the Wrongfully Convicted with another former inmate, Shanti Moses who was also arrested by Mr. Scarcella and was ultimately freed. Wow. The group met for a while at the Brownstone Bar and Restaurant on Tillery Street in downtown Brooklyn, which Mr. Hamilton operated. Uh, Shabaka Shakur, a third man arrested 
by Mr. Scorsella and later exonerated. Well, everybody Scorsella here uh, arrested, they were free. You know, that should say it all right there. The three former inmates would sometimes appear at hearings where Mr. Scarcella was on the stand defending his work. They wore hats that said wrongfully convicted. More recently, Mr. Hamilton has partnered with the Innocent Project in an effort to persuade the New York uh, Police Department to change the way in which the officers conduct interrogations. He has also undertaken a project to organize former prison inmates to work together as a voting bloc for criminal justice reform on Tuesday. He was in court when a Brooklyn judge threw out the conviction of uh, Eliseo DeLeon in what was the 15th exoneration linked to Mr. Scarcella, detective work. Mm -mm -mm. So he spent his whole career just grabbing random people and throwing murder convictions on them. That's what Scarcella did. Damn. Mr. DeLean spent 25 years in prison for a 1996 murder committed during a botch robbery in Clinton Hill. He has long maintained that Mr. Scarcella fabricated his confession. I know what it's like to come home and have nothing. That's why I'm going, Mr. Hamilton said before the hearing. The guy who's coming home, he needs to know he's got a friend. Wow. So this man right here, y'all, is the one that fabricated all of these murder charges and put these charges on innocent people. And those folks are finally... 20 something years later, getting out of jail. This man should have long been in jail by now for what he did. And I'm going to say this again. If you are a cop and you falsify a police report, that should be an automatic prison system. I'm a sentence. Sorry about that. Automatic prison sentence. And ladies and gentlemen, you lucky I'm not running the place because Scarcella here I would make sure this man get the same sentence that those folks that were wrongfully convicted got. I'd put his butt in jail for 30 years. I would. And, I, and it would be without parole. But y'all, please tell me what you think. I mean, I'm really happy for Derek Hamilton. I'm glad he was able to do something that a lot of people that are exonerated are not able to do. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.